Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Hands Down DFS video. You've got Ryan here and we're at about the halfway point in the NFL season. Uh, crazy to already think it's been, it's already at the halfway point, but that means we got week 9 DraftKings DFS content coming up for you guys. Starting with, as always, with our stars and darts where we go through the slate. Go through the DraftKings main slate and pick out our favorite payup spots and our favorite uh, dart throwers, our favorite spots to get some value. Before we jump into the plays, um, I want to shout out Daily Grind Fantasy over at dgfantasy.com. If you're looking for a great and affordable resource to get uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, Yahoo, uh, DFS projections, to get ownership projections on each of those sites, uh, to have a great community of Discord where you can you know, chat with other people who are playing DFS, ask them questions, uh, have plenty of content creators there who are willing to share ideas. Uh, all for an affordable price. Go check them out. Use the code hands down or just click the link down in the description of this video and you'll get $5 off. And in addition, a lot of their plans come with uh, a credit over at Fantasy Cruncher, which is, you know, a great uh, lineup optimizer. So if you want to have success playing large field GPPs, you'll probably need them. So you're getting really a lot of a lot of utility at a very cheap price. So go check them out. Use the code hands down or click the link in the description to support us as well. So into the plays for my star of the slate uh, at, at quarterback. I think a lot of people are actually going to go Lamar Jackson here. He's at his cheapest price of the season and the Vikings are apparently only 24th versus quarterback. So I think a lot of people, ownership is going to fall on him. But the Vikings are allowing just 19 points per game over the last five games. That's not a lot of touchdowns. And, you know, sure, Lamar Jackson can still get points without scoring a lot of touchdowns. But instead, I like for a couple hundred dollars cheaper Dak Prescott at 6900 I think he's a great leverage play. Uh, probably won't be very high owned coming off the injury and against a tough Denver defense. But, you know, the Cowboys have averaged 32 points per game this season. Um, and... What makes Denver's defense so good is that defensive line, but the Cowboys have probably the best, um, if not the best, then definitely one of the top offensive lines in the league. And, you know, I just think Dak's going to be able to, it, he won't feel much pressure. I think he'll be able to have time in the pocket and throw the ball. And, you know, Denver does have a good defense. So if they do limit Ezekiel Elliott, that's just more work for Dak Prescott. And maybe we can, you know, get him throwing probably not as high as 51 times, but, you know, around 40 would be preferable that could get them you know to that 30 point mark we're looking for so I like Dak Prescott as kind of a more leverage pay up spot in this on this slate for my dart we're going to go down to 5,000 and play Tyra Taylor coming off the IR uh, at only $5,000 and going against the Dolphins who are allowing 24 DraftKings points against according opposing quarterbacks uh, which is almost five times Tyra Taylor's salary I mean, I mean it makes him a great cash play I do want to see how the ownership's looking for him uh, come Sunday morning uh, to play him in GPPs. I'm more considering only for cash right now because I think he will carry a lot of ownership and he, you know, he does carry some risk. So uh, I, I like Tyrod Taylor, but again, sticking with him for cash unless I see ownership is fairly low. And before we move on to running backs, we just have to mention Jordan Love at 4,400. After Aaron Rodgers got the COVID, Jordan Love's going to step into the starting role against a future Kansas City defense. Again, kind of same same uh, situation as Taylor, where I think because he's so cheap against such a bad defense, a lot of ownership is going to fall on him. So I uh, don't mind playing him in cash. Uh, probably going to stay away from GPPs because, you know, he's getting first start of the season. Uh, don't really know how it's going to go. So he, he does carry some risk. But those two guys are very cheap and you need to consider. Over for the running backs, I'm going to pay up for the top spot this week in Alvin Kamara, 8200 Sure, he's the most expensive player on the slate, but he's also tied at the cheapest price he's been this season. You see, the only other time was 8200 against New England. It's been more expensive than that throughout the season. So I think he has a great, a great price on him. Um, he's averaging 23 touches a game, which is trailing just Derrick Henry and Najee Harris. And the Falcons defense is, has allowed four over four touchdowns, four or more touchdowns of four of the seven games this season. So there's definitely scoring opportunities for New Orleans. Um, he may be chalk this week, but I, you know I, I think we're looking at another 30, 30 plus DK point game for Alvin Kamara this week. Uh, you know, especially if he can get get work through the air with Trevor Simeon at quarterback. 
So I really like paying up uh, high for a running back this week. For my dart, going to take a bit of a risk because I took a risk on the Philly backfield last week and it didn't work out. But it looked like Boston Scott was the number one running back. Uh, this can definitely destroy your lineup because he did split work with Jordan Howard. Gainwell got touches. Granted, they were all in the fourth quarter. I don't really know what's going on with this Eagles backfield. It's interesting. I might want to stay away from However, I mean, the Chargers have a much better offense than the Lions, who the Eagles faced last week. But debatably, they have a worse rushing defense. They're allowing 159.4 yards per game on the ground, uh, 5.1 yards per carry, both both worst in the league. So assuming we see a similar uh, game plan to start the game from the Eagles as they did last week, there's going to be a lot of rushing opportunities. And, you know, if this game stays within... Not a thirty-eight to nothing blowout like uh, that game you got last week. Uh, you know we'll see we'll see Boston Scott and Jordan Howard in for for more uh, more more rushing attempts. Uh, he got twelve last week, but again, if it stays close, I'm expecting him kind of in that fifteen to sixteen range. That should put him pretty comfortably at around seventy yards. Uh, if you throw in a touchdown there at fifty-two hundred, you're you know you're getting pretty good value. So I like Boston Scott as my dart throw for running backs. Then to wide receivers where we're going to go with a couple guys. The number one guy I've highlighted is DJ Moore at 6,400. There's just not really a lot of high price wide receivers I like this week. Uh, looking at the list. Hill's going to be the chalkiest in my opinion. Without Rodgers, you know, you can't really go Devontae Adams. Uh, I don't mind Debo. He is questionable. But he is at his highest price point in the season, what kind of scares me away. Uh, guys like Chase, Jefferson, Lamb, Williams, Hopkins, they've all got fairly tough matchups. So that's why I'm going all the way down to DJ Moore for my first pick. Uh, he's the 12th highest price receiver, but he does have the second most targets of anyone on the slate for the year um, and third overall. It, could be in part because the Chargers struggled against New England last week, and maybe that's why his price is so low. But, you know, I just think this $6,400 price tag for DJ Moore for the targets he's getting, just those two do not go together. He should definitely be in the 7000 range as he has been the last few weeks. So I, I, I think DJ Moore is just too cheap to ignore at 6400 for a pay-up spot. My other pay-up spot, one of the guys I didn't mention already, Stephon Diggs at 7700 uh, he's got a very favorable matchup versus Jacksonville, who gave up 12 catches for 142 yards to Tyler Lockett last week. Uh, 10 catches, 70 yards, and two touchdowns to Waddle a couple weeks before. Uh, nine catches and 118 yards to Tyler Boyd uh, what, four weeks ago, about a month ago. And Diggs is obviously a much better receiver than those guys, and Buffalo has a much higher scoring offense than those three teams I just mentioned, uh, the guys from the three teams I just mentioned. He found the end zone in consecutive weeks now after a mediocre start to the season where he was kind of in this low teens, the 15, 16, 12 range. He's he's picked it up. He has a couple 20-plus point games, 15 points last week. So, I, you know, I think that connection is finally getting stronger. So I think Stephon Diggs is going to be a good play this week. For my first dart, because I mentioned Tyrod Taylor, one guy down here at 3,600 that I like is Nico Collins. Uh, he's my GPP flyer. Uh, we talked about the Dolphins secondary, who's been very bad this season. Uh, they're allowing the second most DraftKings points to wide receivers, including 12 touchdowns. And Nico Collins played the second most snaps uh, of the Texans wide receivers last week. So if you're looking for a really cheap GPP stack, uh, I mean, or just a GPP flyer play, it doesn't even have to be a stack. You don't have to play him with Taylor. But as a one-off, Nico Collins is great at 3,600. Uh, he's, you know, see the past three weeks, four or five, six targets. If he can get four or five catches with those, uh, I expect that it's going to be good for a lot of yards against Miami. Uh, I don't think he's going to put up 25 points. I mean, it, it's possible, I guess, but I'm more expecting him to get, you know, something like six catchers or so for 70 yards and, you know, have a really solid, like 13 to 17 point game and at $3,600. That's more than what you're asking for at that price. So Lake Collins is my first dart. My second dart is less of a dart. I um, think he's going to be fairly chalky. 
But Hunter Renfro at 4,800 after the unfortunate situation with Henry Ruggs, there's not really a debate who the number one wide receiver on this team is now. And Carr's just been throwing the ball really well this season. He's completing 68% of his passes, which is good for 10th in the league. He has the second most passing yards per game in the league at 324. And Renfro's just been consistent throughout the season, uh, seeing eight targets almost every game, five to six catches, averaging around 13 DraftKings points. But now that uh, Ruggs isn't going to be there, I think he's got a real chance of 20 plus, um, especially if the Giant or if the Raiders can put up points against the Giants. I think uh, just talking about Las Vegas, um, if we just highlight some of their receivers, you can also play Brian Edwards and Zay Jones. They're they're also super cheap. Uh, Jones should be seeing you know probably 50 percent of the offensive snaps, and he's minimum priced. So that's another guy. Uh, he's got the big play capability. I mean, he only had one catch a couple weeks ago, but for 43 yards. So he's got big play capability, and he's minimum price. So I, I think that's another GPP flyer that you can take. And then closing out with our tight ends, my first tight end, my star tar- tight end, is Dallas Goddard at $4,500. Uh, I mean, he's just been money without Ertz. I know it's only been a couple weeks, but uh, since now that he's playing a Plus percent of snaps, he's been able to consistently run routes, consistently get targets, consistently be productive. And the Chargers are trailing just the Ravens, who, you know, spoiler, we're going to talk about in a sec. For most DraftKings points per game, a lot to tight ends. Uh, And unlike last week, the Eagles are not going to be able to run the ball for 75% of their offensive plays. The Chargers are actually going to keep this game close, I would think. Uh, If Goddard was able to get seven targets in a game where they won by almost 40 points. I don't see any reason why we can't expect him to get nine or 10 targets in a game that should be a shootout. So really like his price this week, really like the matchup versus the Chargers, and uh, just really like you know his role in the offense, in the Eagles offense without Ertz on the team anymore. And then to close out for my dart tight end, at $3,000, Tyler Conklin is probably the most undervalued tight end on the slate. Uh, he's the 11th most targeted tight end in the league, and they're facing Baltimore, who, as I just mentioned, is the worst in the league versus tight ends, along 20.4 DraftKings points per game. And obviously, Baltimore is good enough to keep Minnesota throwing. Uh, it's not going to be, don't like Dalvin Cook this week. I don't think it's going to be a big Dalvin Cook game. I think it's going to be, I, I I mean, I do have some interest in the, uh, the Vikings wide receivers also, but I think the Vikings passing game is really, really enticing uh, this week. And Tyler Conklin, who's basically the third most third most targeted guy on the team for three thousand uh, dollars, it's a great play. I think I don't think he even carries that much ownership. Uh, early projections have him well less than five percent, closer to like two percent um, owned. So, really think Tyler Conklin is a great value play this week, and it is one of my favorite plays on the slate in general. But definitely one of my favorite uh, pay down spots at tight end. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, for the rest of our week nine content that's coming out this week, we'll have a couple more videos. Also, hit that like button if you like this video. And you know, if there's anyone else that we, you know, you think I failed to mention, or any anyone else that you think is a great play on the slate, feel free to comment. Uh, lastly, again, check out Daily Grind Fantasy. Use the link in the description or the code Hands Down to get five bucks off your first month, and then just get access to all the great uh, all the great resources they have over there. Uh, again, thanks for watching and catch you guys later on this week.